everybody. Final thoughts time for Steam Donkey, which I think was on Kickstarter four or five years ago. And as far as I know, has never gotten a second print run. So there aren't very many copies of it out in the wild. I apologize for that in case you saw this run through and thought, hey, that looks like a lot of fun. I like the aesthetic. I, I like the ebb and flow. Well, you might have a hard time finding it. There are a few of them. I think there's some used copies for sale on BoardGame. Or check BoardGamePrices.com. Maybe they're still rattling around. But... You know, it's, it's largely been forgotten to the annals of board game history, to the cult of the new, have moved on from Steam Donkey. And that's a shame because this is a really sweet and charming little game. Um, and uh, it's, it's one that Jen and I have held on to all these years because we like it quite a bit. Uh, you know, it has a, a very, very... I mean, I, I will say it has a, a kind of steady rhythm to it, uh, which is not all that uncommon for these sorts of engine building games. Okay, I build my engine, and then I run it to get some resources, and now that allows me to build up even more of my engine, so I can run it to build up even more, and you get this kind of snowballing effect as the game continues. And because of that, by the end of the game, you are a very powerful and rich uh, seaside attraction town that are doing big, major turns, and the velocity of the game just goes from 0 to 100, you know, right in the blink of an eye, and you don't even quite realize it, as it's seemed like at the beginning, wow, building 10 or 12 attractions, that seems like forever away. But then by the end of the game, you're like, oh my god, you're gonna finish it next turn, aren't you? Oh my gosh! And I've still got a, I've still got all my people tied up, and I, but will I have time to actually build, you know, etc, etc. Uh, it has a really great pace. Although, to be fair, uh, it does start out a bit on the slow side. I will have to admit that. as Because you start basically with no engine whatsoever. And based on the cards you have, um, you, you have to... Uh, you know, build up your infrastructure slowly, turn after turn. It can be sped up a little bit with judicious use of the special characters and whatnot. But it's not until the midpoint of the game that things are really humming and the game really comes to life. Because while it does have that central, um, you know, cyclical repeating flow of build, attract, convert, build, attract, convert, as you just get bigger and bigger and bigger, the game will constantly surprise you with opportunities. A lot of it has to do with stuff coming on the platform. You know, there could be a dearth of beachgoers for what feels like months or years. And they're like, okay, well, I'll focus on... And then all of a sudden, well, I'm in the middle of my flow here. I'm going to do the other thing I'm going to build. Oh my god, where do all these beachgoers come from? Do I... Um, or, or you know, but but I but I need to recall all these people right now, um, so that I can get the stuff I need. Uh, can I wait? Uh, nobody else seems to have beach, so maybe that's okay. Maybe I'll, uh, you know, and paying attention to what your other opponents are capable, knowing when to strike and when to let something sit and build up, is a huge part of the game. And if you're playing at a higher player count, knowing how to best leverage the use of these characters, um, because you know they might always seem useful, but you know Donkey Boy is the only one that is constantly useful throughout the game. And at the beginning of the game, which is why I showed in the run through, he certainly seems to be the most powerful because every round he just gives you an extra card. That can be a really big deal. But towards the end of the game, you'll find nobody wants Donkey Boy. Everybody wants uh, Miss Ice Cream or um, the Princess Royal or the Admiral because they let you once you have a huge huge infrastructure of tons of stuff, you want those other characters that let you do big, huge, powerful moves. So they were kind of useful situationally to be at the beginning of the game, but by the end of the game, everybody's vying for them, and everybody forgets about poor Donkey Boy. Um, which, I don't know, is just kind of uh, part of the fun and the charm of the game. But uh, it is implicitly more interesting juggling these characters when you have more than two players. Because in a two-player game, there's only the two characters. And um, so the other two are out. And it still works, but I have actually played this as a four-player game, and it is so much more fun trying to... Oh, please, please, nobody take, uh, you know, uh, uh, Madam Ice Cream. Please, I just need... Oh, you took her! Okay. That means, do I wait a whole nother round? Because you're only going to use Madam Ice Cream once, and then she'll be available again, and the guy you took it from doesn't want it back. So does that mean I do something else this turn? And that's where the joy of this game comes in. You know, trying to respond to the external stimuli that is provided by your erstwhile competitors, um, you know, on the beachfronts all around England. And that's why I really enjoyed it. So, while it's a little bit weaker at two... It's still good, solid fun at two, um, because it, there's no denying, no matter what the player count, it is so satisfying once you've built up your initial engine and you just start turning it, raking in the bucks from these uh, tourists like crazy. And so, yeah, um, we're happy to keep it. I, It's a shame it didn't get more love. I'd love to see expansions with more cool special characters and more scoring opportunities and more special buildings that kind of break the rules. Like in the base game, the only truly unique building is the Fununcular, who comes into the game, let's see if I can find him, uh, with a 
with a blue background, which means when you build the funicular, uh, it can go into the parks or the city or the beach. I'd love to see more cool ideas like that. But even still, even without that, I think this game has legs for days because every time you play, it's all about the choices you make and the choices your opponents make and how you see things evolve and striking while the iron is hot and breaking that rhythm at the right time to really rake in the points in Steam Donkey. And that is it, folks. That was a run through. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye bye. Oh, wait, not bye bye. I totally forgot. One more thing I wanted to mention. I haven't tried it yet, but the developers, since releasing the game, which originally was a two to four game, have released solo rules as well. Like I said, I haven't tried them, but I read them. I was thinking about maybe demonstrating them uh, for the run-through, but I figured I should show uh, the way I'm more familiar with the game. But the solo rules look really solid. And in fact, uh, you're competing against, uh, uh, you know, trying to build faster than a, you know an automated system. And they the rules even say, if you find yourself having a hard time winning, here's some ways you can adjust the difficulty. So I suspect it'll be a good, solid, fun engine building time for solo gamers. That's not something you see a lot of. Solo engine building games that have an interesting and compelling competitor to go up against. Might also be uh, food for thought. Uh, maybe someday the Ragnar Brothers will actually revisit it if there's enough interest in there. But I'm still happy to hold on to my copy. So once again, folks, Steam Donkey, thanks for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.